China's railway development has been a recurring topic on this channel. We've examined how the country built its extensive high-speed network in record time, reviewed their high-speed trains, and covered specific examples like the Beijing-Shanghai high-speed railway line. Today we'll focus on another major achievement, the construction of the Beijing-Guangzhou high-speed railway line. Completed in just seven years at a cost of $42.5 billion, this line is the world's longest high-speed railway and one of China's most important vertical arteries within the four vertical and four horizontal transport strategy adopted in 2004. Before we continue, we'd like to extend our heartfelt thanks to all our Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Your contributions mean the world to us and help us bring you more quality content. Now let's get back to the fascinating story of the Beijing-Guangzhou high-speed railway line. Commonly known as the Jingguang Line, it stretches roughly 2,298 kilometers from Beijing to Guangzhou, connecting more than 30 cities and serving a population of around 400 million people. Along its path, it links prominent urban centers such as Shijiazhuang, Zhengzhou, Wuhan and Changsha before reaching the Guangzhou. The railway line is designed for speeds of up to 350 km per hour, although it initially began operating at around 300 km per hour. This line predominantly employs ballastless tracks and makes extensive use of elevated structures to reduce the land use. After putting the line in operation, the Beijing-Guangzhou journey time has decreased from 22 hours on traditional rail services to just about 8 hours. Structurally, the line is divided into three key sections, the Wuhan-Guangzhou section, the Shijiazhuang-Wuhan section, and the beijing Shijiazhuang section, which were constructed and opened in phases. The construction of the Wuhan-Guangzhou section was the first to commence. Work began in Changsha in June 2005, and the line was formally opened to traffic in December 2009, completing the project in just four and a half years. Stretching 968 kilometers from Wuhan Station to Guangzhou South Railway Station, this segment stands as a remarkable feat of engineering. Of its total length, 468 kilometers are laid on bridges and 177 kilometers run through tunnels, meaning approximately two-thirds of the route is either elevated or underground. The line features 684 bridges and 226 tunnels, including the 10-kilometer-long Liu Yangye Tunnel, the longest on the route. Along the line, 18 stations were constructed. Designed for a maximum speed of 350 km per hour, trains along the section typically operates at around 310 km per hour. During trial operations on December 9th, shortly before its official opening, a test train set a record by reaching a speed of 394 km per hour, covering the distance between Guangzhou and Wuhan in under three hours. Once operational, the line dramatically reduced travel times. The journey from Wuhan to Guangzhou was cut from 11 hours to about 4 hours while the trip from Changsha to Guangzhou dropped from 8 hours to just 3. The Wuhan-Guangzhou segment cost approximately around $17 billion at 2009 exchange rates. In its first year of operation, the line served 21 million passengers, and within two years this number was doubled, bearing in mind that trains had transported 54.6 million passengers. The Shijiazhuang Wuhan section spans 841 kilometers and required an investment of approximately $18.6 billion at 2012 exchange rates. Construction began in October 2008 and was completed in two phases. The Zhengzhou Wuhan segment opened in September 2012, followed by the Shijiazhuang Zhengzhou East segment in December 2012. With trains operating at 300 km per hour, the travel time between Shijiazhuang and Wuhan was reduced from 7.8 hours to around 3.3 hours. 
This line is extensively built on elevated structures, resulting in a bridge and tunnel ratio of 81%. It features 13 stations along the route. Among the engineering highlights is the crossing of the Yangtze River in Wuhan via the Tianxingzhou Bridge. This combined road and rail structure, which opened in December 2009, cost approximately $1.6 billion. Measuring 4.7 kilometers in total length, its main span stretches 504 meters, making it the world's longest combined road and rail cable-stayed span. The bridge accommodates four railway tracks alongside six traffic lanes for road vehicles. Construction on the beijing Zhuang segment officially began in October 2008 in Zhuozhou City. Just over four years later, in December 2012, this 281-kilometer section was open to traffic. With seven stations and a reliance on elevated structures resulting in a bridge-tunnel ratio of approximately 77%, its completion marked the inauguration of the world's longest high-speed railway line. The construction of this segment reduced travel time between Beijing and Shijiazhuang from approximately two hours to just one. The total estimated investment for the beijing Zhuang section was about $6.9 billion at 2012 exchange rates. As of December 2022, trains along the Beijing-Guangzhou high-speed railway line had transported approximately 1.7 billion passengers over its first decade of operation, which is about 170 million travelers annually. As highlighted, trains ran at around 300 km per hour, but with the introduction of China's advanced Fuxing EMU trains, speed enhancements became feasible. In May 2022, the Beijing-Wuhan segment underwent thorough testing, reaching speeds of up to 385 km per hour and confirming the viability of faster service. As a result, from June 2022, trains on the Beijing-Wuhan stretch resumed operating at 350 km per hour, cutting the shortest travel time between these cities to about 3 hours and 48 minutes. Two years later, similar upgrades were implemented on the Wuhan-Guangzhou portion, further reducing journey times. Currently, eight pairs of G-series high-speed trains, the fastest in China, run daily between Beijing and Guangzhou. These trains take approximately 7.5 to 10.5 hours to reach the destination, with second-class seat tickets priced about $130. Additionally, on Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays and Mondays, six pairs of D-Series trains operate at speeds ranging from 200 to 250 km per hour, taking about 12 hours. These trains offer new soft sleeper tickets priced at around $120. Occasionally, normal speed overnight trains are also available, taking approximately 22 hours for a single journey. In 2016, China adopted the 8 vertical and 8 horizontal high-speed railway network strategy, integrating key corridors such as the Beijing-Harbin and Beijing-Guangzhou lines with an extension to Hong Kong and plans for a branch line to Macau. This strategic initiative further expanded the world's longest high-speed rail line to Hong Kong. The final 142-kilometer segment Connecting Guangzhou to the West Kowloon Terminus in Hong Kong via Shenzhen features extensive underground tunneling beneath the Pearl River. The project was completed in three stages. The Guangzhou South Shenzhen North segment opened in December 2011, followed by the Shenzhen North Futian section in December 2015, and finally the Futian Hong Kong segment was inaugurated in September 2018. Among the engineering highlights is the Shiziang Tunnel, a 10.8-kilometer underwater passage beneath the Pearl River estuary. Supporting speeds of up to 350 km per hour, although typically operated at 250, it is the fastest underwater high-speed railway tunnel in the world and China's longest underwater tunnel. 
These advancements significantly improve journey times, reducing travel to 48 minutes between Hong Kong and Guangzhou, compared to the previous two-hour trip. The project incurred substantial costs. The 116-kilometer Guangzhou-Shenzhen segment, designed for speeds of 350 km per hour, was built at a cost of approximately $2.7 billion. Meanwhile, the 26-kilometer Hong Kong section, constructed entirely underground and designed for speeds of 200 km per hour, became one of Hong Kong's most expensive infrastructure projects, with its cost reaching approximately $10.9 billion. The Hong Kong section now serves an average of 89,000 passengers daily. Also, special arrangements were required for immigration due to Hong Kong's status as a special administrative region. The West Kowloon Terminus incorporates a mainland port area, enabling mainland immigration and customs checks to be conducted within Hong Kong's territory. This arrangement, finalized in November 2017, allows passengers to travel seamlessly across the entire mainland high-speed rail network without border transfers further integrating Hong Kong into China's expanding high-speed rail system. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about railways around the world, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. Your support helps us bring you more in-depth and exciting content about railway systems and their impact on global connectivity. If you'd like to support our work directly, consider contributing via PayPal or becoming a member of our Patreon community, where you can access exclusive content. Every bit of support goes a long way in keeping this channel on track. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video on Railways Explained.